Hey, Barry Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report. Uh, Celtics beat the Hawks in game two and go up 2 nothing. We talked about Derek White's ginormous game on our last uh, edition of the Garden Report. You can check that out on Celtics All Access. Josue Pavone here. And related to that point, I'm surprised. Defensive Player of the Year voting came out. No Celtics mm. got votes. I'm stunned Derek White didn't. Among the leaders in blocks uh, for guards, I think Shea's up there too and Jane McDaniels. Uh, dominant all year on that end. Held down a bunch of guys way below their averages. I think he held opponents to 44% or so in individual yeah. matchups. <clears throat> all those charge takes and playing for the number two defense in the NBA. I thought he would get some votes. Didn't think he'd win it or anything like that. And Marcus Smart had the injuries he did this year. Robert Williams too. So you understand they're not being a ton of love for the Celtics, but none at all. CLNS Media Celtics coverage is brought to you by FanDuel. Sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston and make every moment more on America's number one sports book. Yeah, I mean, I'm surprised. I'm not really that surprised, though, Bobby. I just feel like people are, aren't hip yet. I mean, maybe next year, maybe uh, after two or three years when you, you're, you're constantly in that top five, top whatever it is in terms of they finished uh, among number guards. Two. He finished two, right? Uh, well, the team's defense. Uh, Kennard was first, right, overall for guards, right, for, for blocks. But I just feel like for guards, it's so much harder where someone like Marcus had to constantly have his name in the conversation for year after year after year until ultimately getting the award. So I just think that's uh, it's just hard for any guard. Guard, especially for someone who, yeah, you're second in guards or second in blocks among guards, but they're going to penalize you when they look at the numbers compared to other forwards and centers. But I mean, look, what he's been doing since the All-Star break, it, it transcends both ends of the floor. But yeah, that block stat is certainly a testament to his effort, his hard work, what he means to the defensive end of the floor. And I'm sure he'll be in that conversation for years to come. I just don't think this is, you know what I mean? I, I, I think this is just the very beginning. Yeah, Jaron Jackson wins the award. Brooke Lopez, the runner up. Uh, quite a few candidates up and down the board, all are great years. I think McDaniels did appear in there from Minnesota. Uh, smart hurt, so he wasn't going to defend it. He actually yeah. tweeted congratulations to Jackson, well deserved. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Uh, but Joe Mazzulla asked today if what, any of the players on the Celtics are taking it personally, particularly smart. Here's what he had to say about that. Yeah, I mean, you could tell by the way the first half defense was for him, and I thought you just saw a different Marcus in that game. Um, and I thought he's, you know, He's the kind of guy where even he doesn't get an award, you don't really understand what he's able to do defensively. There was even a play last game where he sniffed out the play, came across the entire court and blew the entire play up. And so he just has natural instincts to have a, an effect. And, you know, I try to tell him he doesn't need an award uh, to get that value that we talk about from us and the staff because we know what he does for us. Do you as, I mean, obviously you want you guys to get recognition for their success, but is there part of you as a coach that maybe likes it if a guy's got a you know a little bit of a chip on his shoulder like that? I'm a big spite guy, so yeah. So Joe's embracing it. He says he loves the spite. You saw it from Smart in game one, and he shouted out that play. I actually asked Quinn Snyder about where he came flying across the court to break up an alley-oop in game mm -hmm. one. Yep. Uh, the steals, the blocks, the quarterbacking of the defense, calling stuff out. You saw in game one, I thought, and to some degree tonight, a little less so, Smart regaining that form he did last year on that end. And this defense this is what I said on the post game tonight. It looks like that 2022 defense again, which was one of my concerns coming into the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, in terms of its overall production, I'm seeing a little. I'm seeing a little bit of that. Not the same when you think about what Rob Williams meant to that defense, but man, how could we not talk about Rob when we see who he is off the bench in these first two games? So there's something to that for sure. You're getting that same feel as to where everyone knows their role, everyone is shadowing you know, their opponent, and it's not more, it's less about individual uh, accolades and more about the, this team trying to win a championship. So you're seeing that. And I think that's why, uh, that's a big reason why I think Joe is sticking with these eight guys, because everyone has been so committed on that end of the floor. And it's something that they still talk Talk about even after a blowout win in game one, even after game two, how can we improve this defense? Because again, they know the opponents are going to get tougher after this. And that's something that they, they have to continue to, to strive to be uh, one of the top defensive teams in the NBA. And you have to see that at this level. And looking back throughout the, the course of the regular season, I mean, I don't think they're looking at what they should have done at this point. They're just looking at things the way, uh, the way Derek White talked about it after the game, right? Whereas, okay, look, this is this postseason. We're going to take things to another level and we're not going to look at what we were doing last year because we've been here before. And I think you're starting to see that, a, a team that's not only comfortable, but knowing what it takes to win game after game and knowing when, okay, it's a single-digit uh, lead, okay, we have, we have to regroup here. Missoula calling those timely timeouts. Maybe it took the regular season for him to figure this thing out, but he's definitely got it down now. For sure, and 
The group they have out there looks capable, and this is the Hawks, a high-flying offense, so it's somewhat of a test. I wonder oh, how yeah, Grant definitely. Williams benching, though, is going to factor defensively in later rounds, and I've talked about this. I did not like the idea of benching him in this series. Mm -hmm. Two DMPs, so John's prediction, that'd be over one and a half comes true. I don't think we'll see him in this series. I asked pregame if that will hold, and Missoula did seem to insinuate that the rotation they have is the best one to beat the Hawks. Yeah, Hauser, he's right. Small part here, I do want to mention him though, because he is playing over Grant in a small role in that eighth man spot. They went at him. Yeah. Young, Murray, and they, they didn't have success. Yeah. He held his own. I thought that disrupted the Hawks immensely in the first half. It's yeah. a small, small part of what we're talking about here. But Hauser holding his own and hitting a shot or two, mm -hmm. I think that's enough from that eight spot. And that's all they would have asked for from Grant. Now it's different right. next round with Embiid out there because yeah. I think that's a mismatch he probably can't hold up against. Oh, the MVP? We'll some yeah, that's there. tough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but how are you feeling about that decision now through two games to go Hauser over Grant? Um, I like it. I really do, man. I mean, he's he's earned it. He's he's given you that level of effort on, on on that end of the floor, which wasn't the case, right? I mean, he fell out that rotation quickly when he when you started to see him not improve on the defensive end of the floor and, and get beat and get reamed out on one occasion at least by by Joe Mazzulla, or at least he got benched, right? When when uh, they they had those two games in Charlotte, two games in three days, where he fell out the rotation for about a week or two after that because of his uh, deficiencies on the defensive end of the floor. But he's improved. So I, I again, I really enjoy this rotation. I think. These these guys have earned this. Um, you're, you're seeing the effort there on both ends of the floor, and it's one through eight. So, you know, again, why rock the boat when they're playing this at this high of a level? I don't think this is going to be the type of team, or I don't think Grant Williams is the type of player who's going to check out and quit on these guys. No, he cares too much. He looks engaged tonight. I saw a frustration. He cares too much. Yeah, uh, game one, he was, game yeah, one. yeah, that's true. But that's tonight, true. pretty engaged, high fives all around. We'll Catch up with him down in Atlanta if we're able to. And, of course, yeah. we will have coverage. Joe Saipavon and Bobby Manning, our producer Amit, going on the road with us. So shout out to him. And um, game three will take place on Friday. So a couple of days off here for the Celtics. Then practice on Thursday. So we'll podcast tomorrow if we uh, feel like it. And on Thursday, <laughs> we'll, <Yeah. laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be hitting up that practice. So stay tuned for all our coverage here. Still on Media for all the reaction to game two. And Celtics All Access Check us out. for a conversation about Derek White that we had here. For now... Let's see. Will there be a game five back here, Josue, you think? I don't think so, Bobby. I'm not I don't. feeling great about it either. If it happens, then that means something terribly wrong happened in Atlanta, and uh, something's going to have to fix that. All right. 2 nothing down to Atlanta. CLNS Media, Josue Pavone, Bobby Manning, thanks for watching, and we'll see you down there.